Syntax. This podcast is at the advanced level. It requires a thorough knowledge of Accordance Bible software and a working knowledge of either Hebrew or Greek. Syntactical tags can add power and precision to our original language searches, making it possible to find words and phrases that would otherwise be impossible. Accordance offers add-on syntax for both the Hebrew Bible and the Greek New Testament. Lately, we've refined both and added a number of new features, making syntactical searching both easier and more intuitive. Syntax Theory Syntax is a noun used in linguistics. According to Merriam-Webster, it means the way in which words are put together to form phrases, clauses, or sentences. There are many different syntactical theories with resources built on each of them. Accordance's current databases were largely conceptualized by Robert Holmstead with input from Marty Abegg. While their work had its roots in Chomsky's minimalism, their overriding principle has been data primary, theory wise. Their primary goal was to develop databases that were both usable and accessible for the academic community, by both linguists and by linguists who subscribe to other theories. Dr. Homestead, University of Toronto, oversees the team that is tagging the Hebrew Bible, while Dr. Marco Fabri, Pontifical Institute of the Holy Cross, is responsible for the tagging of the Greek New Testament. What is syntax? It's one part of a language's grammar. Grammar can be subdivided into morphology and syntax. Morphology is concerned with the various parts of speech, and their conjugation or declension to indicate case, number, person, and so on. Syntax concerns itself with the roles those parts of speech play in sentences, like subjects, predicates, adjuncts, and so on. In accordance, morphological information is contained in our original language tag text, syntax, and our add-on syntactical databases. What do syntactical databases do? First, they tag individual words according to their function in a sentence. Then, they group those words into syntactical units, clauses, and phrases, which are in turn connected to each other. What are the advantages of owning them? They allow us to view sentence relationships as a tree diagram, permit word searches to include sentence function, and let searches be constrained by phrase or clause, or to specific types of phrases and clauses. Here's a quick look at Accordance's two syntactical resources, displayed here in side-by-side workspaces. Each word's syntactical tag appears in instant details and in a parallel syntax tree that displays its relationship to other words in the sentence. At the same time, it keeps those words in their original sequence. Cross-highlighting between the text and the tree makes it easy to find the same word in each. Now, let's take a closer look at the syntax trees. Syntax trees. We open the Hebrew syntax tree using the same Add Parallel button we use to add any other parallel resource. We can choose to display it vertically or horizontally, switching between the two using the Pane's Actions menu. Like other resources, we can give it more or less space by changing this boundary and increase the size of the font in the display. The cross highlighting is especially exciting as it indicates which words belong to each syntactical unit while reminding us of the name and definition of the unit in instant details. It's especially nice that this syntax tree retains the same word order as the text itself, which makes it very easy to follow along. The Greek syntax tree of John 1 nicely illustrates the parallel structure of the Gospel's first verse. It has three independent clauses all connected together. Each of them uses the same subject phrase, Hologos, the word. Syntax word searches. There are 13 different syntactical tags attached to words. Subject, the doer, agents, or experiencer, patient of the predicate. Predicate, the verbs. Complement, the word or words that are required by a verb or preposition in order to complete the semantics of each. Adjunct, the word or words that are not required but add additional information about a noun or verb. I'd like to stop and note here 
that both of these last two categories are wider than the English classification system of direct objects and indirect objects. Although these categories can be used to search for them, these databases do not tag words using those particular designations. Word tags also include the specifier, which is the definite article, appositives, which are words that elaborate on a preceding clause, phrase, or word of the same type, and vocatives, words of direct address that stand apart from the subject and predicate of the clause. The exclamation, a word that interrupts the normal syntax to orient the addressee, whether it's the reader or a character in the narrative. The casus pendens, a dislocation, which is a noun or pronoun placed outside a following clause and resumed within the clause by a resumptive pronoun. The null, an implied word such as a subject or verb. The antecedent, a word to which a subsequent word refers, such as a relative pronoun. That leaves only begin speech, which is used to indicate the beginning of direct speech, and unknown, which is used mainly in fragmented text with no clear syntax. Now that we understand the labels, syntactical word searches are just as easy as morphological searches and use the same methods. If you know how to perform a grammatical tag search, you can perform a syntactical tag search. Provided you have the database installed, just choose a syntactical tag from the search menu. If you prefer typing the search string manually, the search syntax is similar. A morphological search is constructed like this, and a syntactical search like this. You can see the similarity between the two. Combining both morphological and syntactical tags requires two at signs and looks like this. By the way, even regular word searches can benefit from syntactical tags, as analysis can sort the results into syntactical categories. Just use the Payne's Action menu to change the display settings. Let's do a very simple syntactical word search. We'll look for all the Hebrew words that have been tagged as exclamations. The hits graph gives us a sense of where these are the most common in the Hebrew Bible. The gap here indicates the very few books that are not yet tagged rather than the absence of exclamations. Analysis displays all the words that are used as exclamations, along with the number of times each is used. Now, let's try something a bit more complicated in Greek. If we search for beloved in Greek, agapetos, we find it 61 times in the Greek New Testament. But consider this example at Matthew 12, 18, where agapetos is the subject in parallel with pais, is there anywhere else where the word is used as a subject? We can right-click here in the search entry box and add the syntactical word tag subject. It turns out this is the only time beloved is the subject of a sentence. How else is the word used? Well, let's just rerun the previous search, like so, and check the analysis. I'll add syntax to the sort. And here's our answer. Syntactical word searches are just that simple. Now, even more complex syntactical searches are possible if we use the construct search. Syntax construct searches. The construct search expands our search capabilities greatly, and it's not just the ability to mingle syntactical tags with other kinds of information. First, dragging and dropping any one of these labels brings up a dialog box that allows us to choose their compound forms. Choosing any of these labels gives us the option to search for a word, a phrase, or a clause of that type. If we choose word, then double-clicking on the label once it's placed gives us the same opportunity to choose their compound forms. However, it is this ability to search directly for clauses and phrases that makes the construct search so powerful. Clauses and phrases are both groups of words, which is why dropping either into a construct search stretches across several columns. If we then need more columns to contain our search criteria, we can place the cursor over the divider bar and drag it to include more columns. We can use clauses and phrases to constrain our searches, limiting our hits to those words that share a specific relationship within these syntactical units. However, 
these two groups of words vary in important ways. A clause is a single syntactical unit consisting of a subject and a predicate, although either may be implied. Independent, that is, main or top-level clauses are self-contained, while dependent, that is, subordinate clauses, are contained within a phrase, typically a predicate phrase. A phrase is a syntactical unit, typically forming one component of a clause. It lacks the subject-predicate character of the clause. At its core, a phrase is the projection of a single element, often referred to as the phrasal head. For example, a subject phrase is the projection of the hierarchy around a subject, a predicate phrase the projection of a predicate, and so on. Accordance recognizes three different kinds of clauses. The independent is the main or top-level clause, a sentence complete in itself and conveying a statement, question, exclamation, or command. This independent clause may be part of a larger group of independent clauses within an entire sentence. It may also include one or more dependent clauses. Speaking of dependent clauses, the dependent clause is a subordinate or secondary level clause contained within a phrase of the independent clause, again, typically a predicate phrase. Finally, the parentheses is a special clause category that interrupts the flow of an argument. Whether the argument is at its core chronological, as in a narrative, or logical, as in an exposition, as for example in many psalms. Dropping the clause label into the construct search gives us an opportunity to choose any of these three types. We can also select from among five subtypes, complement, adjunct, subject, a positive, and casus pendens. We can also search for, or exclude, those that are tagged as speech. There are fewer types of phrases, four in fact. Again, the type is determined by the head of the phrase. Subject, predicate, complement, and adjunct. In all cases, the phrase includes the word and its modifiers. Here are two examples from Accordance's syntax trees. This Hebrew complement phrase from Genesis 1.1 shows a compound complement phrase where each segment has a direct object indicator, a specifier, and a noun. The two segments are then joined by a connector. This Greek predicate phrase from John 1.1 shows the predicate verb modified by an adjunct prepositional phrase which includes the required noun complement to the preposition n. Once again, choosing and dropping the phrase label produces a dialog box allowing us to choose any one of these types. There's an important difference between searching for phrases and clauses and searching for words. Accordance displays those search results very differently. When the bottommost item in the construct search is a word, Accordance highlights all hit words. However, when the bottom element is a phrase or clause, Accordance draws lines through all the words in the hit phrases or clauses. Where multiple phrases or clauses overlap, including the same words, Accordance uses multiple lines. If you've been watching closely, you've probably seen a relatively new feature in our phrase and clause search dialog boxes, the ability to adjust the depth of the search. We can set it from 0 to 9, though the default depth is 2. Now, we can change that default in our Greek and Hebrew preferences, though, here. What do these search depths do? They set the maximum depth accordance will look for the element immediately below it. This allows us to widen or narrow our search parameters. Consider this construct search. It looks for all predicate phrases that are 0 to 2 levels below the adjunct phrase. The search result pane indicates the hit phrases by using lines. Now, look at the syntax tree. Here's the adjunct phrase. Each node below it represents a level, like so. The level immediately below it is considered zero because its lower position in the construct search already indicates it's below it. Setting the depth to two means that Accordance should search two additional levels, basically ignoring any intervening clauses or phrases that don't meet the criteria of the search. Now, if there's no element below the depth setting, it does nothing. The easiest way to initiate a Hebrew construct search is to place our cursor in the search entry box and type command 3. 
That's Control-3 for those of you on Windows computers. We're going to search for a clause, an independent clause, and we're going to set the search depth to zero. That means the elements directly underneath this clause on my construct have to be directly underneath it on the syntax tree. The reason I'm setting the depth so low is that I want the subject word and the predicate word to be directly related to each other, not belonging to some other phrase or clause further down the tree. Now specifically, I want to find out whether the plural lexeme Elohim is ever paired with a plural verb in the Hebrew Bible. The answer is, yes it is, although it doesn't happen often. Now, let's try something similar in the Greek New Testament. Again, we'll limit our search to independent clauses, this time to those where pneuma, spirit, is the subject, and it is followed by an active verb. Notice the way we can mingle lexical, morphological, and syntactical criteria in the same search. Notice here that my search found clauses with both the Spirit of God as the subject and these impure spirits as subjects. I'd have to add more qualifications if I wanted the search just to find one or the other. I hope you found this in-depth review of Accordance of Syntax helpful. Now that we've covered the basics, I'll remind you that the only real way to build skill in these kinds of searches is to practice. I trust our syntactical resources will open up new insights in your study of the Bible in its original languages. This has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp. <music>